how we go about becoming an amazing receiver of all good things, especially all your desires in terms of creating abundance. Abundance is an inside job and your intuition is the key to unlocking it all. Hello and welcome, I'm Rebecca Davison, founder of the Intuitive Life Academy, the leading place to develop your intuitive and psychic gifts. As an ascension guide and light leader, I'm committed to bringing you all the latest tools, developments and the neuroscience available when it comes to the art of effortless manifestation. This show is for light workers and for those who identify that your intuition is your greatest guide to bring you happiness, expansion and money. With my corporate banking background, you'll receive practical advice along with all the energetic tools that you can apply in your life today. So if this resonates with you, let's jump into the world of abundance and learn what it takes to experience true freedom. Hello and welcome beauties, this is Rebecca Davison, intuitive coach, founder of the Intuitive Life Academy. Welcome, welcome to the Intuitive Abundance Podcast. First and foremost folks, I'd just love to say thank you so much for all the lovely people who have left reviews, who've left feedback, insights, comments, and that the Intuitive Abundance Podcast podcast is really supporting you and your own journey of abundance. I love to hear that. It definitely makes my heart sing. So thank you so much. Today in episode 18, what I'd like to talk to is being an amazing receiver and how we go about becoming an amazing receiver of all good things, especially all your desires in terms of creating abundance. So I think the first place to start is to actually look at this from the physical body. So the question that I have for you in the first instance is this, to what level are you living from your physical body? Now the next evolution of that question might be, to what level are you living from your body as opposed to your mind? And then the next evolution of that question may be, to what level are you open in your physical body. So we're going to spend some time unpacking this a little bit today, but I want to talk about how, in the first instance, we're taught to live from the mind. So as a human, when we're born onto the earth plane, by the time we're five years old, we go to school. You know, that's usually the rule of thumb, depending on where you are and what country you come from. But if you have that opportunity, education is revered, right? It's valued. It's seen as powerful. So we know from a very small age that it's important to get an education. And often we develop an awareness very quickly that your level of intelligence is very important, especially in terms of your future success. So, you know, by the time we're 18 years old, you know, at that point, whether we step out into the world or we maybe go to university, etc., we already know, and it's been indoctrinated within us, that your mind and your intelligence and how you choose to apply yourself through the mind is so important. It's imperative. But of course, what happens as well is we have created a society of people who live from their mind. The mind is revered, it's valued, your intellect is valued, what you think about is important, where you place your focus through your mind is important. However, when we start to look at that in terms of satisfaction, we find that it's lacking. It's lacking to live just from your mind. And this is when perhaps you start doing some personal development and start realizing that living from your mind is not enough. It is not fulfilling and it's not satisfying. So then we have to start to learn what it is to be in our body more, to take our attention and our focus from our mind and bring it more into the body. And of course, that opens up a lot of energy in terms of feeling your feelings. Now, this is not something that we're taught at school yet, how to feel our feelings, how to be present to an energy that comes forth in the physical body, and how to know how to process it. And we can see that this is lacking because we have a society where a lot of people experience anxiety. Now, what is anxiety? In my awareness and interpretation of that, 
It's looking at the emotional energy, which is the feeling, the emotion that comes up. And what people do, and this is generally accepted, and you might find yourself identifying with this, but people take the intensity of the energy, the emotion that is present for them, and they take it up into their mind. First of all, most they turn it down, and then they take it up into their mind and they think about it. They think about an emotion, they ruminate on it, they stress on it, they overanalyze it, they dissect it, they look at it from 160 million different perspectives in the respect of trying to think through the energy. They're literally using their mind to try and process the emotion. But this just creates rumination, stress, overwhelm. And of course, what happens is the body is still giving the feedback that you haven't actually processed the emotion. So what happens is it can feel like a buildup of energy, which is often why people have a lot of fear moving out of their mind and into the body. They feel overwhelmed and they feel like there's so much emotional energy present that if they actually take the time to feel their feelings, that it's going to be like a bit of a tsunami. Now, you are infinitely clever, powerful, and amazing in terms of your ability to process energy. So one of the first things that we support ourselves in doing, you think about it, if you're, you know, if you're trying to get a lot of energy through a small space, it's going to feel like a lot. So one of the first things that we would actually want to start doing is learning how to expand energy field. And when we do that, we can allow more intense emotions to move through us more easily. But that often feels counterintuitive to a person who's living from their mind. They can feel like, whoa, if I expand my energy right now, it's not going to feel safe. But that's the journey of learning how to be in your body is actually a journey of self-trust. The more you can actually be present to your emotions and know how to process the energy through, and emotions always shift, right? They always move. But they get stuck if we don't allow them to move. And that's when it can feel more intense. When you start working and expanding your energy, allowing and knowing how to process the energy through, you create more confidence. You create more self-trust. It becomes safer to be in the body. Now, the next evolution of that, really, once you're bringing your attention into the body, you're becoming more aware of how you're feeling. If you worked with me as a client, I'm always asking that question, what emotion is present for you? How are you feeling? And that is not an answer for the mind, because the mind goes, I'm fine, thanks. (laughs) That's a social construct that we have created. What I'm saying is, how do you feel in your body? So when I ask a client that question, I want them to go in, preferably into their kind of chest area, notice how they're feeling in the body, and then be able to speak to and identify what emotion is present. The more we do this, the more we're actually creating more truth for ourselves and for other people. If you can actually honestly speak to how you're feeling and create space for that, and of course that leads us to non-judgment. So another thing that we have to look at is realizing that none of your emotions are good or bad, right? They're just emotions. I don't think there's anything harsher, right, than seeing people, I call them expanded and contracted. You know, some people would say negative and positive, but again, being aware of our language, You want to treat your emotions like your children. Even if they're more intense, like anger, frustration, sadness, hurt, as opposed to joy, bliss, love, realizing that they are all yours, right? And that they are like your children in the respect that they all deserve your loving attention. We don't want to make more intense emotions wrong or bad. We just want to be aware that they're more intense, right? And again, this is our construct of the mind. These ones are good and these ones are bad. That sets us up for failure because, of course, we can spend a lot of time and energy trying to run away from more contracted emotions. If we have the courage to actually be present to them, open up energy field and allow the emotion to move through, we actually gain more self-love, more self-honoring, more self-trust, more self-acceptance rather than trying to push them away. And people can spend lifetimes, right, trying to push emotional energy away that they do not want to feel. 
it will come back, right? It will pop up. You will get triggered. Your body is designed to show you where you are holding energy that does not serve you, woundedness that does not serve you. It's just looking to be processed. It doesn't make you right or wrong, good or bad. You are beyond that. And that's the beautiful thing about working with intuition is you realize that there is no right or wrong. There is no good or bad. You want to work beyond that. Right, wrong, good, bad is a construct of the rational mind. Loving acceptance is what we move into when we start working with our intuition. And this makes it so much easier to be present to an emotion that may be frightening to your mind, but your body and your soul know that you have absolutely everything that you need to be able to process that emotion through. This makes it easier to be in the body. Now you think about it too, because the mind, you may have noticed, tells us a lot of stories. And the mind tells us a lot of stories that are actually incorrect, erroneous stories. Stories like, I'm not good enough, right? I'm not worthy. I don't deserve that. I'm not allowed that. I haven't given myself permission to have that. And can you see that energy combined with an unprocessed emotional energy can create a lot of contraction and dissonance in our body and in our energy field. This is why it's imperative. You, you want to be great at manifesting. You want to be an excellent feeler of your feelings. You want to love and accept them all. You want to allow the negative emotion to move through without judgment. There's nothing more painful than being in contracted energetic state and then judging yourself. Please don't do that. Right? There is nothing wrong with feeling contracted. It's just showing you what you don't want to experience. And also, when you come from an elevated mind, you can actually be grateful for that. I'm having this experience right now because it's showing me something that I don't want. I can actually appreciate the contrast so I can get more clear on what I am choosing. And this is so important when it comes to your abundance because your ability to be able to flip from contracted to expanded is so important. It's imperative in terms of keeping your body feeling relaxed and therefore open, which makes it easier to receive. There's lots of different ways too that you can litmus test how good you are at receiving. How do you feel when somebody gives you a really heartfelt, genuine compliment? Is it easy for you to take it into your heart and into your body? Because for some people, it just slides off like Teflon. They're like, oh no, that's not me. They can't receive it. Other people notice that. When people give you a compliment, they're giving you an energetic gift. If it's not received by you and into your body, it can kind of feel a little bit like deflecting, like a little bit know that feeling when you're received and it feels so good like when somebody's really listening to you and they're receiving what it is that you're saying and how good that feels somebody gives you a compliment and you don't fully receive it it can feel like it hasn't landed in the place that it was intended to like there's an, a missed opportunity for a greater sense of connection now the next evolution beyond even feeling our feelings is even checking in and you could ask yourself this question now because usually your body is pretty aware of this stuff which is do you have any defense mechanisms in your body at present? Now what is a defense mechanism? So a defense mechanism is where in the past you have been hurt or there has been a circumstance that's happened that you have been, that you felt upset about, and part of your subconscious has decided, I don't want to ever feel like that again, or I don't want to be exposed to that kind of pain again. And what can happen is energetically, you can pop energy into your field, which feels defensive. Now, often you will know this. You might feel a little bit of energy in front of the heart space, a kind of a need to hold energy in front of you that feels protective. Often we see this as heart walls. The other way it shows up and is prevalent as well is often in the root chakra, like not feeling safe about being in a body, you know, like a heart wall and maybe just like a block energy in the root. 
And again, these are things that we can feel into energetically. And often you might even be able to notice if people around you are a little bit defensive, a little bit standoffish, a little bit like you can't, you can really connect with them. It doesn't, you know, it feels like a little standoffish, pushing people away. Energetically, it's already there. Right? And you may notice that you might have some of those defense mechanisms. Sometimes I've seen it before where people, they have an openness about them, but they kind of have the a little button energetically there where they want to push it. So if they need it, the shield can come up. And again, this is subconscious, folks. We're not doing this consciously, but we're trying to help ourselves to feel safe often in situations where we've had past experiences where we haven't felt safe. So again, there's nothing wrong with doing this. However, it's limiting. And you can appreciate in terms of your abundance and your flow, it definitely has an impact. So we want to be aware and we want to bless the parts of ourselves that decided that they needed a defense mechanism in the first place. You know, isn't this amazing that my subconscious is wanting to support me in this way? However, I have greater awareness now and I'm going to do what it takes to let go of anywhere I felt unsafe in the past so I can step into more expanded energy. So it does feel safer to expand my energy so I can be more open, so I can receive, so I can allow life force energy to move through me in a bigger way and I get to feel really good about that. That's what we're aiming for. And again, you might know immediately, you might not be fully aware, depending on how sensitive you are to energy and maybe how sensitive you are to what's going on in your body. And also too, right, sometimes it can take a little bit of time, a little bit of practice to be in the body. But there's lots of different ways, of course, that you can support yourself in that. Being in nature is really amazing for the physical body. Having your feet, your bare feet connected to the ground. That's one thing that would have happened a lot in the past. Everybody was connected to the earth because they had bare feet. Now we all wear shoes. So again, all these little things that can contribute to being more grounded, making it safe to be here now. You know, making sure that you're placing yourself in environments that feel supportive and loving. That's super important, especially in terms of what you expose yourself to, whether that's social media or the news, etc. Making sure you're creating an environment for yourself where it is safe to relax, where you are working with your central nervous system to create deeper levels of relaxation in the body. One of the number one things that you can do instantaneously in the moment is your breath. Take some deep breaths. When you have a long exhalation through the breath, and I always recommend breathing in through the nose and then out through the mouth. Breathing in through the nose is just a bit soother, soothing, more soothing on your lungs and your central nervous system. But when you exhale as well, when you do a long exhalation, it lets your body know that you're not in fight or flight. Super important long exhalation you know if you have a long exhalation you're not being chased down by a tiger if you have a long exhalation you're signaling to your body that you are safe and safety is really important in terms of feeling open and this can often be a big journey for women in terms of being open in their physical body to allow themselves to receive to receive from life, to receive from other people. Because what we have often is we have a lot of people, a lot of women that I work with who are in business for themselves, who are entrepreneurs, and they are working from the rational mind to create and grow a business. But we want to be in our body to experience the fulfillment, the satisfaction, the pleasure that is available to us. And our bodies yearn for this. And you know what it's like, folks, if you have made a decision and you have gone against your body, where your mind, you get asked a question and your mind, because again, we're often trained and conditioned to do this, your mind goes yes immediately. There could be some unconscious people pleasing going on, but you haven't checked in with your body. You haven't even asked your body if your body is a yes or a no. So bringing your attention into the body and asking the body, hey body, are you in agreement with this? Now, if your body says no, and you don't take any action to remedy that, this is how we lose trust with ourselves. 
our body is literally like, I've given you information and you're not following through on it. That's how you create disconnect with self. That is a painful place to be. And also too, it chips away at your confidence. It chips away at your ability to maintain your own energetic boundaries. And of course, this is so imperative. You as the consciousness that has a body are the one that needs to maintain your boundary so you get to feel safe. Okay, you are the one who needs to do that. You are the energetic gatekeeper. You determine what comes into your energetic field. You determine where you spend your time, who you hang out with, what conversations that you have, what energy you are emitting, what vibration you are choosing. You are the one who gets to determine that. And this is why we must take ownership. If you want your body to feel relaxed and open and make it safe for you to be in your body, you'll learn what it takes to become a really good feeler. You'll learn to go to your body first rather than your mind. Of course, where is your intuition held? Your body is the barometer of your soul. Your body's always giving you feedback and information in terms of what's good and what's not so good for you. Like your body will light up and expand or it will contract. It will give you information. But we have to be willing to listen to it. We actually have to be willing to make it a priority. Some of the amazing things that happen though when you don't think so much, right, when you come out of your mind and into your heart and into your body is you get to feel good more. You cultivate that. Because you're willing to process all your emotions, it's easier to stay in a higher frequency of energy because you are accepting yourself. You're accepting the light and the dark. When you're accepting both, it makes it easier to hold a higher vibration. You'll create more flow because you're not blocking the energy known as the emotion from moving through. You know what to do with it. It makes it easier to feel good for longer. You'll be able to be very aware, you know, your body will give you information immediately if something's not great, right? You'll be start to feel some crunchiness. You'll know what to do with that. You can make decisions accordingly. You can work with your body to keep yourself safe. And again, when you do that, you create more spaciousness around you. It's easier to hear what your body's saying. It's easier to experience more satisfaction, more fulfillment, more pleasure. You'll start learning what it is to choose to do things that bring you more and more pleasure. It will be easier to be in the present moment because you'll feel safer and safer and safer. So a lot of people might think that that sounds contradictory to feel safer You need to be in your body. And if we have experienced some kind of trauma, it can be that simple to kind of go out of the body. We can disassociate. It's not safe to be in this body. I'm going to check out. Again, we can see that in lots of different ways that it plays out. But what are you choosing? Are you choosing to be in your body more? Are you choosing to be open in your body more? Again, if you need help or support to learn how to feel your feelings, to be present to the physical body, to notice if you are holding yourself back from being in your body because you're afraid, then please do go to my website, www.rebeccadavison.life. Make a time to speak with me in terms of us working together to help you to get free and clear. You know, it's a golden opportunity to live a more fulfilling life because abundance isn't about just money, folks. It's about living in energetic frequencies that feel amazing. It's about being able to calibrate to the energies of bliss. It's about, and again, your mind might be hearing this right now, but I can guarantee your body is yearning for it. Your body desires to know feelings of bliss. Your body desires to know feelings of joy. That is a natural instinct. Every single cell in your body listening to this right now is like, yes, I want to know what that feels like. I want to know what that feels like more consistently. I want to know what that feels like to have periods of that where you experience more of it for greater periods of time. Your body has wisdom, infinite, you know, all the cells in your body, like something like 60 trillion cells in your body, they're all connected to source energy. 
They're all connected to infinite wisdom. Your body is actually more intelligent than your mind. And we know that the subconscious is more powerful than the rational mind, the rational conscious mind. When we start working with the subconscious and our intuitive guidance, we're accessing greater levels of power. And when we feel safe about being in our body, we're going to be able to respond to life more. It's going to be easy to feel more pleasure in your body. It's going to be easy to feel more open to feeling more goodness in your body. But if you are the one who is going to take the accountability, you can create so much joy and passion by being in your body. And again, when the universe knows that you are open and you are asking for your desires to be made manifest, it's going to be easier to receive them because you are open. So, you know, even this really simple process, which is just, I am open, I am open, or I'm choosing to be open. If you don't really feel that open right now, say that, I am choosing to be open. I'm choosing to be open-hearted, choosing to be free of judgment. I'm choosing to be in my body. I'm choosing to experience pleasure through my body. There's often a lot of unspoken energy around being and experiencing pleasure in the body, a lot of the time that is really coveted. I just really noticed that one of the most powerful things on earth is a woman who's truly in her body and allowing herself to receive pleasure, right? To be in those moment-to-moment experiences of I choose to feel good, I choose to feel life force energy moving through me, I choose to be in a vibration that just feels incredible, and I'm going to do the inner work to create that experience. It is so powerful and it is definitely divine frequencies. So my wish to you folks, of course, right? How open are you in your body? Do you feel safe to be open? Is there any kind of construct kind of held in place that you kind of feel is holding you back or is creating a sense of separation? Sometimes in spiritual circles, they talk a little bit about protection, Right? Like putting yourself in a bubble or protecting yourself. I really look at that as people who are learning how to maintain their energetic boundary. Because the truth is, you are love in a body. You don't need protection from anything. You know, your rational mind, again, if you bounce into that, will give you a list of things that you need to be protected from. But as a soul, you know that you are about beyond that. Right? Even your interpretation of your life experience. Are you choosing love or are you choosing fear? There's just two states. If you're in love, you're open, you're relaxed, you're happy. Pleasure's moving through you. Light's moving through you. Love is moving through you. If you are contracted, you will be in fear. You will argue for your limitations. You will look for all the things that are wrong. You'll be offended easily. Your wounding will keep on pressing up against you. And I guess at the end of the day, folks, it's really a choice. What are you choosing to create for yourself? Where are you choosing to place your focus? Are you choosing to love yourself enough that you're going to choose to focus on yourself and your own energy and be very, very aware of it and bring lots of loving acceptance to yourself in regards to your emotions, no matter what has happened to you in the past? Because we all have experienced things that create trauma being unprocessed emotions, which often held in the body and can can create triggers, right? Where somebody taps up against something emotional inside of us and it's usually connected to the past about something that hasn't been processed. So this is the work. We do the inner work of melting our resistance, melting our fear, choosing more love, choosing to vibrate in more love and choosing to be the energy And the energy of love is open. The energy of love is accepting. The energy of love is kind. So, you know, when you squeeze an orange and orange juice comes out, that's what we want to experience for ourselves. When we've done the inner work and pressure is applied to us, that's when the love can come out the most. That's when we have the opportunity to show people who we really are. If we have still have wounding inside of us, it can often, you know, it can be natural to create a defense mechanism. It can be natural to disconnect. It can be natural to isolate. It can be natural to pull away. When we learn 
that it's all up to us in terms of our creation. We take responsibility, we're accountable, and we can notice that life really is about softening ourselves, going from that kind of hard metallic energy that self-defensiveness holds and softening into openness, softening into more trust, softening into making it safe to be more open. This is the work and this is what's so important about being an amazing manifester is the more soft and more open you are in terms of your body and feeling safe, the easier it's going to be for you to be able to receive all good things. Compliments, gifts, opportunities, resources, money, cash, cash flow. Again, all the amazing things that are possible when you're in the energy of self-trust, self-confidence, allowing, giving yourself permission to experience your desires and being the person who's choosing to be open. Everybody loves to be around somebody who's open because it gives other people permission to do the same. And we all want to be seen and loved and appreciated. But the most powerful way to do that is to do that for yourself. When you learn how to start feeling your feelings, you're really honoring yourself. You're literally saying, I'm looking inside of myself and I'm choosing to bring loving kindness to whatever it is that is. The energy can shift. You can make a different choice. You can make a different choice tomorrow, right in this moment. That brings you a higher vibration of energy. And that's the thing. People do not understand the power of the choices that they make. You get to choose to be more open. You get to choose to let go of your defense mechanisms. You get to choose to heal the past. You get to choose to elevate into higher frequencies of joy and pleasure. And it's available to you now. Now, at this point in time, you might not have all the tools to be able to create that for yourself, but you can definitely get them, right? You can definitely step into, I'm going to learn what it takes. And again, that's what we do in the Intuitive Life Academy. We give you the tools so you can let go of the pain and you can step into higher frequencies of love and joy. And then it just becomes a game of how good can I feel to contain more joy, Like, how good does it get? Because that's, you know, how good can you handle it? Because that's as good as it gets. That literally becomes the focus. You know, how can I even feel better today so I'm more open to receiving? How can I, you know, it's again, folks, can you see how a lot of abundance work is not really just about money. It's about feeling good. It's about creating the energetic environment within yourself that feels incredible, And isn't that amazing, right? You get to feel good and create abundance. That's what abundance is. More than enough everywhere you look. Feeling safe, feeling relaxed, feeling happy, feeling open, feeling pleasure, allowing yourself to experience bliss. That is true abundance. And especially as a woman, right? We're amazing feelers anyway, But really our ability to feel, to feel good, to feel love, it literally shifts the vibration of the planet. This way when women come together, it's so powerful because we're choosing to tap into those energies. And when we do it collectively, it's just incredible. You know, folks, intuitive mastery is actually coming to an end. I'm recording this on Monday the 16th, I think it is, and of August. And... Intuitive Mastery, which is a 10-month program. At the moment, it is at least. And there's 20 amazing women who've journeyed with me during those 10 months in terms of letting go of the past, learning what it is to surrender, learning what it is to forgive, learning what it is to acknowledge and witness your own emotions, learning what it is to shift energy and to step into being a coach and a healer and a guide and a leader, right? A light leader. And I am so, you know, it's amazing to have gone through this journey with these incredible women. But we come to a close this evening. We're closing our sacred circle. We're closing the container. The program is now complete. And just incredible in terms of what's possible in that period of time. right? In terms of these women shifting their vibration. 
you know, even just like one story, like, and it just blows my mind because I didn't even know that was possible. And no doubt in my mind that it's an amazing plant, but I don't know much about plants. One of the amazing women, Wendy, she sold a plant on Trade Me, which is eBay, if you're not familiar, for $1,500. I was like, I have never heard of that in my whole life. Like a pot plant <laughs> to sell for $1,500. I didn't even realize that that was possible. That is quantum physics at play. That is, she has loved that plant and she's gifting it to somebody else, right? And the money is just really a reflection of her vibration, of how much love and effort and energy she poured into it. But just amazing in terms of being able to create that and, you know, delightful for her because she's starting to see how her energy and vibration impacts the world around her. She had another circumstance too where some other money came in in a different circumstance, but just incredible. And again, the other women in there realizing that it's all about your energy, your frequency and your vibration. If you're in, if you're feeling good, your vibration is going to be open. It is that simple. If you're not feeling good, that's okay. But also too, one of the things about manifestation that I think we miss is that it is a moment to moment experience. It's not something that you do on Wednesdays at two o'clock. Okay. It is who you are being moment to moment. So this means that the choices that you make in your mind, which create connection and intimacy or create disconnect, they matter. The words that you think in your mind have a vibration. They matter. When you find yourself having a kind of a, a dialogue with yourself, you know, arguing with yourself, what you say to yourself about yourself, about your ability, it matters. And this is why we need to choose the positive true thoughts, which is why that statement, I choose, can be so powerful. Because maybe what you want isn't here yet, but you still get to choose it. And this is why, again, we're activating the power of your ability to make decisions is important. So I choose to feel good in my body. I choose to be aware. I choose to be in my body. I choose to be open in my body. When you start saying a statement like that, your intuition will start bringing you information and awareness to support you in that. And again, folks, you think about it. If your energy is really contracted, you're going to feel all kind of scrunched up, right? Like a, the image that often comes to mind for me is like a ball of, a ball of tin foil, which is kind of like metallic baking paper, right? Scrunched up as opposed to just arms wide open and feeling expanded. Again, from universal perspective, it's way easier to give to expansion, it's way easier for you to be able to receive it than from a place of contraction. We don't want to make ourselves wrong if we're not manifesting what we want. But one of the first steps that we would want to take is to look at, well, how do I feel on a day-to-day -day basis? You know, is my predominant energy upbeat and pretty good? And I'm saying nice things to myself and I'm believing in what's possible and I'm leaning into the opportunities and I'm saying yes to my desires more and I'm implementing that and making it happen. You know, I had a call for Joyful Money, 7 o'clock, and I actually bumped it half an hour earlier so I could go to a jewellery class, right? And I appreciate all the women who are flexible and allowed me to change the time, but again, because I'm committed to doing things that bring me joy, that it's safe, right, and good for me to choose myself if I'm choosing myself and I'm cho choosing something that I really love and it's fun and enjoyable. That has a knock-on effect on the people that I spend time with, that I am pouring my light and energy into. So being prepared to make those decisions that create more expansion, even to ask yourself throughout the day, how expanded or contracted am I? Am I choosing to bring more light and more joy in my body, which I get to choose at any given moment, or am I creating more contraction? You know, a lot of times when people come to see me, they feel like, you know, I'm creating amazing things, but I'm not creating 
as quickly as I would like or I'm not creating my desires in a way that really feels amazing and a lot of the work really is about doing the melting the resistance you know what does it take to go to the next level and to go to the next level quickly what does it take to activate universal laws so you can experience more bliss more joy more pleasure and that's a really courageous act folks because again it doesn't take much to look to the external and realize how much fear is taking place like it really is if you look at what's happening out in the world if you boil it down energetically it is just love or fear love or fear so where are you choosing to place your attention because you have a choice and a lot of people unfortunately believe that love is weak which is incorrect love makes you strong right? and it's stronger than fear fear contracts love expands so again, what does it take to choose expansion, to choose to be open, to choose to feel safe and to choose to do the work to help create that for yourself and your life and in your body? Because once you learn the tools, folks, you have it for life and it pays dividends. You'll know how to create abundance for yourself. Super powerful work. And again, you know, it's so much fun sharing those stories of how people create and manifest you know, and I've seen so many miracles that have happened for people once they start calibrating to the energy of abundance. I'm just about to start going through the testimonials actually for intuitive mastery and just listening. I've only watched half of one at the moment, just listening to the manifestations, right? Getting a new car, getting new clients, because people have just worked on calibrating to feeling good. And how amazing is that? That life is definitely rigged in your favor when you understand how energy works, when you learn what it is to feel safe inside of yourself, safe to receive more of what it is that you want. You get to feel good and to receive more. And as you're feeling better and better and better, you get to receive more and more and more. Incredible. So knowing, folks, that you are so incredibly powerful, if you're not working with your intuition and your spirit at the moment, please come and join us in the Intuitive Life Academy Facebook page, which is on Facebook just under Intuitive Life Academy. It's called Creating Profit for Lightworkers, so Intuitive Life Academy dot dot Creating Profit for Lightworkers. You'll see me in the green there, same branding obviously as on the podcast. And we work in there, right, energetically every day to raise our vibration. It's a very interactive community in terms of focusing on what is good and learning what it takes to let go of resistance so we can evolve quicker and faster than ever before. And goodness knows, the world needs more love, we all do, and that's the choice that we get to make. So much fun connecting with you folks. Always a pleasure to bring you this information. I'm sending you so much love and light. You take good care of yourself and know that you are love. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you for joining the Intuitive Abundance podcast today. If you've enjoyed the show, please be sure to subscribe and write us a review so we can help other people positively impact their lives. I would really love that. If you're ready to activate the energy of abundance within you, then be sure to go to www.intuitivelifeacademy.com to sign up for our abundance activation process. Until next time, here's to your ever-increasing freedom. All my love. Bye for now.